Now that we've pretty much created all the objects that we can create inside Civil 3D, we're going to start talking about plan production inside Civil 3D. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create some view frames to create sheets based on our alignment inside of this drawing. In order to create sheets, the first thing you have to do is you have to create view frames. So in order to create view frames, you have to navigate to the output tab of the, of the ribbon bar and get to the create view frames button. Select the create view frames button and the create view frames alignment window pops up. So inside of here, what you're going to do is you're going to select the alignment that you want to create view frames based off of. So we're going to go ahead and select dev align. And we're going to leave the station range as automatic. We're going to hit next. From here, we're going to select what kind of sheets we're going to create. You have the options of creating plan and profile, where you have the profile stacked above or below the plans. You have plan only, where you can have just plan sheets, or you can have profile only. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do a plan only sheet set. Uh, I'm going to use the templates that are provided inside of Civil 3D. If you have sheet sets that are already created for you where you work, or if you want to create one, you can model yours after the plan sets that are inside of Civil 3D. But for us, right now, we're going to go ahead and use a 20 scale Arc D plan because we have our annotation scale set to 20. We're going to set our sheet set size to 20. So I'm going to go ahead and select 20 and select OK. From here, you have the option of how you want your view frames to be placed on the alignment, whether you want them to run along the alignment so that the alignment generally runs through the middle of the drawing, or you can have it rotate north so that north is up on your drawings. For our purposes here, I'm going to have it do a long alignment. And then you have the option for setting the first view frame before the start of alignment by a buffer zone. So if you check this option and you set a buffer zone, Civil 3D will take the first view frame and set the beginning of that view frame at least a certain distance before the edge of that view frame. I'm not going to check this option and I'm going to go ahead and hit next. So now what we have the options for is what is the name of our view frame group? So I am going to again call this dev align and then have it as view frame group. Actually, that's probably overkill because we, right now what we have is VFG dash view frame group alignment name. So the alignment name for the view frame group, as you can see here, is dev align. So we're going to go ahead and back out on this dev align and just leave it as VFG view frame group alignment name next counter. Again, we have the option of to put a description in, what the layer that the view frames are going to be put in on, and then what the name of the view frames are going to be. So VF next counter. This one we could put dev align and then have view frame so that we know that these view frames are associated with our dev align view frame or our dev align alignment. Uh, from here, we have our style of what the view frames are going to be. These are very basic and generic. So probably one is okay and just run with that one basic one because in display, what you're going to see is the view frame border. You have one option and you have a layer and a color and line styles and line scales. And then when you drop down for your view direction, you only have plan available. So you probably don't need to have more than one view frame style. So you can go ahead and click apply and OK. The only time you maybe need more than one style is if you wanted to specify the difference between if it's a plan only, plan and profile, or profile only. So maybe you might want to have three styles. From here, you have the label style. There is a label that's going to go in the upper left-hand corner. Well, based on this label style, it's going to go in the upper left-hand corner. But it is going to just basically label, as you can see, you probably can't see right here. But if I zoom in real close on the corner, the name of the view frame goes up on the upper left corner. So I am just going to leave it as that. And I'm going to go ahead and hit Next. And now we have the option for match lines. And so what match lines are is they are basically denoting the location of where one sheet matches with the next sheet. And so we're going to go through these options. You can choose to create view frames without match lines, but 
I find it easier to just add the match lines as we're creating the view frames. So I'm going to go ahead and check insert match lines. I'm going to have it snap to station values down to the nearest one. You can add additional distance for repositioning, which will increase your overlap. So it'll decrease your viewport window. Uh, not necessarily your viewport window, but how much information is shown in one viewport window. And you'll end up having more overlap between your sheets. And sometimes that's desirable. For me, I'm going to leave it as unchecked. Uh, for your match line, you can set your layer. Uh, I'm going to leave it as CNO match. Then you have your match line name. So I'm going to call this one dev match line. And then we will specify style for your match line. And if I go to edit my basic match line, what you're going to see here is that you have options for plan and then your lines and your match line mask and then what your mask pattern is. Uh, so I'm not going to modify what these ones have. I'm going to just click OK and leave it as basic. And then you have your label styles for the left and right hand side of the match line. And so what that does is, is there is certain labels that are placed to the left of the line and certain labels that are placed to the right of the line based on which view frame you're in. And so if you go and you look at these and you edit the left ones, what you're going to see is you have the match line text. And on the left hand side, it is telling us that it is going to return us information on the match line number, the station, and the previous sheet number. And so then if I go to the right hand side and I edit it and I go and I look at this, it's going to say it's the match line number, the match line station value, and the next sheet number. So this is basically placing labels so that when you look into your view frame, you're going to see on one side referring back to the previous page and on the previous page, you're going to see it referring to the next page. So I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel. I'm not going to change these. I'm going to leave them as is for now. And I'm going to create my view frames. And so when I select create view frames, what you'll notice happen is there are two blue borders that are dropped into my drawing and they are labeled. And if I go to my alignment around where there is the crossing of the two view frames, you're going to see this white dashed line here. That's my match line. And then my match line has the labels associated with it. Match line one at station five plus 58, previous sheet number. And we haven't set up the sheet numbers yet, so we're not getting a number set up. And then match line one at station 558, next sheet number, and having a sheet number there. So now that we've set up our view frames, in the next video, we're going to go ahead and set up our sheets. All right, now that we've created our view frames, we can go ahead and create our sheets. So just like when we created our sheets for our cross sections, when we create our sheets for our drawing in Civil 3D, Civil 3D is going to ask us to save the drawing once we create the sheets. I don't want to have these sheets in the drawing moving forward, so I'm going to save off a separate version of this drawing just for my sheets. So I'm going to go ahead and hit File, Save As. I'm going to save this as 102-Sheets. And I'm going to click Save. So from here, what we can do is we're going to go ahead and navigate up to the output tab of the ribbon bar. We're going to click on create sheets and we're going to navigate through the create sheets view frame group and layouts window. So we're going to start in view frame groups and layouts. We'll go to sheet sets. Profile views won't show up because we only created plan view sheet sets. But if you had profile views and plan views or profile views only, this option would become available and you would set the options for how you want your profile views to show up in your sheet sets. The one important note to make inside of these, this one is that when you select profile views, you have to set your profile view origin. And so that is just the origin from where you place your profile view window. So moving on from here, what we're going to do in the view frames group is we are going to specify which view frame we want to use or which view frame group we want to use. We only have one, so we're going to choose our VFG Devil Line 1. Uh, we are going to use all of the view frames that we've created. 
Now we have the option of how we want to lay these sheets out. Do we want to create one drawing per sheet or the option of creating all the layouts in one new drawing or do we want to create all the layouts in the current drawing? So if I didn't want to create a new version of this drawing and I that I created here called 102 sheets, I could have selected all layouts in one new drawing. It wouldn't have added any sheet sets to the drawing that I was working in, but we have this new one that's been created already. So I'm going to go ahead and add all the layouts in the current drawing. Probably if you were doing this for work, you would want to not create the extra sheet because you would be disrupting your references. And so you would want to go ahead and use the number of layouts per new drawing or all layouts in one new drawing. Or if you have very small amount of view groups like we have here, you could do all layouts in the current drawing. But for our purposes for these videos, I wanted to create one new, one new drawing and do it as all layouts in the current drawing. So from here, we're going to go ahead and choose our layout name. I'm going to call it Dev Sheets. And then choose the North Arrow block to align in layouts. There are a couple of North Arrow blocks that are in here. I'm going to go ahead and go with North. And I'm going to go ahead and click Next. So then from here, we have our sheet set options. Uh, we have a new sheet set or add to existing sheet set. We don't have any sheet sets, so we're going to go ahead and go as a new sheet set, and we're going to call it, we'll just call it DevAlign1. And then the sheet set storage location, you can set yours to where you want to have it saved to. I have mine selected as where I'm saving my data sets to. So from here, we don't have any of the other options, so we would go ahead and click Create Sheets. I'm going to go jump back to view frame groups and I'm going to select all layouts in one new drawing so that the data references link shows back up. I'm going to go look at data references now. So when we create a new sheet to create these, these sheet sets in, if you want to take some of the information with you to that new drawing, Civil 3D will create data references and we're going to talk about these later, but Civil 3D will create the data references for you and bring those data references into your new drawing. So inside of this data references window, you can select all of the options that you, all the items that you want to have data references brought over into Civil 3D for you. Based on what we had selected in our view frame groups, Civil 3D already selects some of the options that we want to have transported over, but if there were additional pieces of information you wanted to bring over, then you could select those options and have them also brought over as data references. So I'm going to go ahead and jump back into view frame group and layouts, and I'm going to go ahead and choose all layouts in current drawing, and then I'm going to go ahead and click create sheets. So Civil 3D is going to ask me to complete this process by saving the drawing. I'm going to click OK. Civil 3D is going to save the drawing, and it is going to produce my two sheets. So I am getting a action warning that says two layouts were created in the current drawing and I'm going to click check. And down here, I will see that I have a dev sheet set up for my first view frame here. And I have a dev sheet set up for my second view frame here with the borders that we had selected and it gave us new sheet numbers. So now if we go look in here, we should have sheet numbers showing up into our labels because we've now set up the sheets. So previous sheet number one, next sheet number two.